Let's have a look at some Cubase preferences that you may want to change. Do you need to change any? Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at some Cubase preferences, and maybe there's some in there that you should be changing. Who knows? Let's find out. So let's go to Edit, Preferences, and we'll start at the top with Editing. And here's a really great one for you. Track selection follows event selection. So what does this mean? When I click on an event, it automatically selects the track as well. So select this one here, it selects the track. Now I find that really, really useful, especially when you're editing an event, and then you might wanna just change an insert or a send effect on that. It saves you having to go and select the track and then do it. But the default is unticked, so that's completely up to you. Audio, here's a common one. So on import audio files, open the options dialog. So when you're dragging in samples from your media bay or wherever it is, quite often you'll have a dialog box pop up. Like that. Now you probably don't need this popping up all the time because you always want to copy the file to the project folder. And I've never had a situation yet where I didn't want to convert the sample rate and the bit depth of the audio that's coming in to the project settings that I have. But if you click do not show again, and there is a time that you want to get that option dialog back, then this is where you do it. You come to editing audio and click on open options dialog. You can of course click use settings and tick whichever settings you want here. I'm just going to keep it on open options dialog. There's another one down here on options dialog on processing shared clips. So you can either have it create a new version or process existing clip without having it ask you or you have it ask you each time. So this would be useful for, let's say you've got, we'll do it with kicks, but just pretend these are crashes. So quite often you've got, let's say, four crashes and you want to reverse just this one. So it leads into the next crash. So obviously you'd go audio processes, reverse. And this is the dialogue box that we're talking about. So do you want to continue, which means it will reverse all of them? Or do you want just this one selected, reversed, in which case you choose new version or you cancel? So I nearly always do new version because I only want to do the one, but that's where you can decide whether you want the dialog box off or on. So basically this comes important when you're trying to reverse just one, but it's doing all of them and it's not asking you and it gets confusing for beginners. So this is where you change that option. Project and mix console is my next tip. And I like to have this ticked, enlarge selected track here. It's off as default but you can tick it and this is what makes it wider. Every time I click on a track, it makes it wider and zooms in a little bit. So I find that really handy, but I can see how that could be annoying for some people, but really handy for editing quickly on that particular channel. Another common one for beginners is under editors and you decide whether you want the edit window at the bottom in the lower zone or do you want a full screen for you to look at? And this is where you decide that now. Double click opens editor in a window. Default is lower zone, so I'll just put it back to that for now. So when you double click to edit a piece of audio or MIDI, you get it in the lower zone, which is not all that handy really, it's not big enough. And you can open it up here, of course, to a bigger screen, but you may want the bigger screen to come up automatically. So that's where you would do it. Double click opens editor in lower zone, just change that to window close down the lower zone and now when we double click we get a nice big window that's a lot better so that's not the default though so change that if you want very important one here general auto save is only every 15 minutes omg how many times have you been in the middle of a project and your computer has crashed okay not very often but when it happens it is bloody annoying so if you want to change that auto save interval to five minutes or two minutes, whatever, that's up to you. But there it is, that's how you do it. Next one of my little tips is transport. Now this one is really annoying to me. This is ticked as default. Clicking locator range in upper part 
of the ruler activates the cycle. So quite often I'm coming up here to the ruler bit, the cycle bit, and I, I want to move it over. Let's say you want to move it over a couple of bars or something like that. So you get the hand tool at the slightly the upper part of this section. It's quite fiddly. And if you click it, it deactivates the loop, which I've done so many times by mistake. And I really, really hate that. If you click and drag it, you can move it, but it quite often or more often than not, it actually just switches the loop on or off, which is really annoying for me. So if you untick that, and now it doesn't matter if I click with the hand or not, it's not activating or deactivating the cycle. I can just, I can just come on here and move this around. Or sometimes you're fiddling around with the start point and the end point, and you accidentally click, let's say here, and it deactivates it. It's a right pain in the bum. I'll just briefly go into the color schemes because I have covered that in another video. The most common one is this one here, track and mix console channel colors. So you can color the gray parts of the tracks if you wish, like this, which is quite nice, up to you. And the other main one is the mix console channels. Have this on or off. And let's have a look at the mixer. And it colors the channels here but some people may not want that so you can switch that off but i really find it handy if say all your drums are yellow and all your synths are pink something like that you can see exactly what type of instrument it is in your mixer without having to look at the names so i find that really handy actually and if you set cubase up and it's taken you a while and you set all these different things how you like them you can always store the preset and call it something and therefore it's always available for you or you can just press defaults if you want to put everything back to how it was when it came out of the factory. If you got any value out of this video, please get your little thumb and put it on that like button. It really helps us a lot. And if you want to be notified every time we release a video, you know what to do. Hit subscribe and ding, 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 ring the bell.